living this great life, you're doing everything you're supposed to do, but deep inside, when you look in the mirror at night, you know you are sad. And you are sad because your soul hurts, because you need God. When God becomes your ally, then no moral man is worth fear or even respect. I will destroy any moral man on the planet. I fear one person, and that is God alone. So God just broke your heart on purpose to show you that the way you're living your life and the man you are simply are not good enough. What have you changed since? You need to get up and work so hard that even in the eyes of God, he is proud of you. God loves his creations, which show him their true potential and beauty by getting up and trying your absolute best and becoming a man of, of moral standing. He will reward you and bless you. You are wasting your energy. Heartbreak is unlimited motivation. If I was heartbroken, I'd be in the gym every morning. I'd be a beast. I'd be running. I'd be working. I couldn't sleep. I'd be an absolute animal. I became me through tedious, arduous, difficult, never-ending work. You're failing God. If you were the best version of yourself and you were waking up every day trying your absolute best to be a unique and special individual, then you would not be failing God any longer and he would not plague you with this bad luck. And you need to become a formidable force of man that cannot be replaced or replicated anywhere else on God's green earth. That's what you must do. This is going to repeat endlessly. It's a cycle that will not fucking change until you take the message from God and become the man you're supposed to be. If you wake up each day and go, I don't owe anybody anything. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Then you are a loser because you are absolutely not the incorrect. You must prove yourself to other people. You must prove yourself to God. God hates the lazy. He can't stand them. If he gives you all these genetic dispositions and these natural God-given gifts, if you have two arms and two legs and you can think and you're not trying your absolute best, that's the reason you're not lucky. He doesn't like you. He likes the people which show him the beauty of his own creation. He likes to give somebody building blocks and then to build something amazing. It's the best thing about being a man. You get to build who you are, right? You can decide if you want to be a funny comedian or a musician or a kickboxing world champion or fight the matrix. You can decide whatever you want to be. I've never seen anybody dedicate themselves to something completely and fail. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard, and not be in good shape. I've literally never seen it. The universe is extremely giving. If you actually try, and you actually want it, and you're actually not making excuses, lying, talking shit, you're going to get what you want. So when I see people who don't have what they want, I consider them losers. And this may be elitist, I understand that. But if I put myself through endless pain to end up where I am, it's very hard for me to have sympathy on the man who's afraid of pain. You're avoiding pain. I've been through endless. I now have everything I've ever desired. You have none of the things you desire. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Because you took the easy way out? Am I supposed to look at you and go, oh, poor dude? No, you were a fucking coward. You didn't go through the shit I went through. You didn't put it on the line. So you deserve your substandard reality. Because if you actually wanted it and you actually tried, You'd have it. You could have anything you want. Universe is super giving. There's not a car I can't have. There's not a house I can't buy. If I want to go to a yacht, if I want to go to Antarctica, if I want, there's nothing I can't have. At a bam. Because I've decided to become this man. It's the same for absolutely every single one of you at home. If you want it, you can have it. If, you, if you're sitting there saying, oh, but I tried my best and I still didn't get it. You're lying. You didn't try your best. That is a fucking lie. The universe gives it to everybody who genuinely tries. And I know that to be a fact because this world's competitive. We're all competing against each other. And the majority of people don't try. The world is hyper competitive. If you're going to be a man who's going to sit and say, I'm just sad, you are always going to lose in competition to men like me. Yeah. And there has to be losers for there to be winners. I am tired of sympathy. Sympathy doesn't work for anybody. I'm not going to sit here and be sympathetic for people who say they're too sad to try hard and be their best. Guess what? Perhaps I was sad every time I did exactly what I was supposed to do and trained anyway. Perhaps I was afraid when I fought anyway. Perhaps I was tired when I worked anyway. This is how you get ahead in life. I don't have a fucking ounce of sympathy for these people who sit here and say, well, I feel this way, so I can't. Then don't do it. Stay down there. The winners are at the top and the winners at the top don't give a shit about how they feel. We wake up and we perform regardless of how we feel day after day. So if I'm going to ignore my own feelings, I'm certainly not going to take into consideration anybody else's. Yeah. Why am I going to ignore how I feel and make sure I'm constantly performing regardless, flawlessly, and then sit and go, oh, but he doesn't feel good. So he's allowed to fuck up. No, you are not. You're not allowed to fuck up to your ancestors or to God or to yourself. You have to perform. 
This is how it, this is what being a man is about. The baseline of masculinity is doing things you don't feel like doing. I can't comment on being a woman because I'm not one. But the baseline of masculinity as a whole is the thing that makes a good man a man is that he does what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to work and he works anyway. He doesn't want to go to war and he fights anyway. He doesn't want to get up, he gets up anyway. That's the whole point of it. We didn't want to die in the Titanic. Guess what happened? We died in the Titanic. You can't sit there as a man and say you don't feel like it. You're not allowed to not feel like it. You're supposed to do it anyway, regardless. Yeah. So when a man sits there and says, oh, but you don't understand, I'm struggling with motivation. If you are struggling with the motivation to be a winner, then stay a fucking loser. No problem. Stay yeah. a loser. Don't care. Because in my circle, there's no losers around me. Your energy is disgusting. I find it revolting. I don't like weakness around me, even near me. Even people coming up saying hello to me. If you're depressed, don't even shake my hand. I do not have time for losers on any regard. Winners only. If you're the person who wakes up, does work, is fantastic at it, and then takes three days off, you're going to lose. They say that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And it's completely true. You have to be consistent you have to decide. Are you the kind of person who wants to make a lot of money in this life and live a life of freedom? Or are you the kind of person who wants to look back when he's 30 on his 20s or 40 on his 30s and look at that decade and go, what did I do with that decade? Well, I didn't get rich. I didn't travel the world and live like they do and take confidential. What did I do? Well, I had a day off here, a day off there, a bunch of nothing days that amalgamate into this decade of nothingness. And you're just wasting your time. If you want to win, you need to be consistent. You don't need to be the smartest, not at all, but you have to be the guy who's there day after day. And I guarantee you, I will guarantee you right now, IQ has nothing to do with how successful you'll be as a person. What is going to determine how successful you're going to be is, are you there every single day? Are you doing what you're supposed to do day after day? I can also apply this to sales. I knew guys who were terrible on the phone. Back in my day on sales, you start to call companies. I was smooth, I was the best. We had some other guys who were smooth. They'd land a deal, go buy a nice car, whatever, take a few days off, take it easy. We had people who were terrible. When I say terrible, I mean they had a thick Indian accent, didn't speak English that well, didn't know the script that well, didn't know the answers, but they were always in the top 20% of the company because they just hammered the phone. They just were on it. They needed to feed their family in Bangladesh. They didn't give a fuck. They were just calling. That's it, day after day. When you were on lunch break, he's on the phone. You can win with hard work alone. And that's what's amazing about the universe when I say that. God will give you anything you truly want. If you truly want money and you truly try hard, you truly listen to us, you are gonna have as much money as you could possibly ever desire. But if you think you want money, but you kind of want something else, or if you're arrogant, or if you're lazy, you're gonna end up somewhere in the middle if you're lucky and talented. And if you're not talented, you're gonna end up in the middle. So you don't wanna be a normal dude, because when you're a normal dude, you're a loser. You don't get to do amazing things. What's interesting is none of you have had a normal life. You've had a unique and individual life path. The things you've gone through, nobody else on the planet has gone through. You've lived certain experiences, the school you went to, the time you were picked on in that class, the girl who broke your heart. Every single thing you've been through is unique, like a fingerprint, a completely unique life. And somehow you've managed to stay completely non-unique. It's almost impressive how you can have a completely unique life experience and still end up average. The fuck did you do that? Your life's different than everyone else's and you still look and talk and sound and act like everybody else. Like a dummy. That happened because you have not paid enough attention into analyzing your life. Self-analysis. Every single time something good happened to you, every single time bad, something bad happened to you, you've not spent enough human hours sitting and thinking and trying to work out why it happened how to make sure the good things happen more often, how to make sure the bad things happen less, less often. What was God trying to teach you? You are trying to teach you something. You think, oh, I just got scared. No, God sent you a lesson, but you didn't pay any attention to it. Do you understand? Everything that's happened to you has been sent from God himself to guide you on a unique path, everything good and everything bad. And the point of the unique path is that you end up a unique person, but you are failing. God is unhappy because you're not trying hard enough. God hates the lazy. God wants people who try. You understand? You know what I can't stand when I hear Christians say, if it was the Lord's will, I would have had some money by now. No, no, no. You can't dump that on God. He said faith without works is dead. I'm just asking you, man, to try something new. 
Now, if that ain't what you want to do, then good luck. You keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. I would try something else if I was y'all. Look at somebody say, it'll work if you work it. Work it. I started my church with seven people in a building cooking ribs and chicken to pay the rent. When they were calling me the boy pastor and they were making fun of me and said I would never be nothing. I worked a job and I preached on the side and I put my check in the offering to keep the doors open and whatever we had left we cooked up and sold dinners to get another month to fight again. We preach with our lights off. We preach with our water off to get to where we are right now. And I came to tell you today, whatever it is you are trying to build, if you won't sacrifice for it, if you won't be hungry for it, if you won't sweat for it, if you won't bury your pride and put in the work for it, you don't have the right to get it until you will stay up at night and go to school while other people are watching the game and read and work and pray to get to be whoever it is you are trying to be. You have not got the right. You need guts. You can't be this without guts. I preached a year and a half in an empty room. Forget about my dream. What is your dream? What is your goal? And how much, what will you put into it in order to get what you're trying to get from God? How much? It will only work if you work it. If this message spoke to you as a man, you can either cower down and give up and let your wife become your mama or you can stand up like a grown man and handle your business get out of your feelings people will not work for emotional people who have meltdowns and freak out and hold grudges you have to be bigger than that we don't have time to deal with your attitudes so stop popping your neck Hold your head up, get yourself together, and get ready to fight the good fight of faith. I've been wondering why it didn't happen. I didn't realize I had to serve to lead. Nobody ever taught me how much it costs. Greatness is expensive. Succession is expensive. This does not work like your phone. This does not work like an app. You have to work it. And it doesn't happen overnight for most people. Yes, there are one or two people, but out of millions of people, those are only one or two. The rest of us have to work it. It will work if you work. Every discouraged person, every person who's been feeling like it's just not working, it's just not working, this was your message. If I never preach again, this was your message. It will work if you work it. You think you can wish your way up. You cannot wish your way up. It'll work if you work it. Remember these words. It will work if you work it. I rebuke every giving up spirit. I rebuke every quitting spirit. I rebuke every spirit of forlornment. I rebuke every spirit of frustration. The devil is a lie. He's trying to talk you out of your future and tell you you cannot do what God called you to do. The dreams God has placed in your heart are not going to come to pass without opposition, without delays. There will be plenty of opportunities to get discouraged, think that it's not meant to be. If you give up after the first time or the 30th time, what that really means is you didn't want it bad enough. There should be something you're believing for that you are relentless. Your attitude is, if I have to believe my whole life, I'm not going to stop believing. I'm not going to settle for mediocrity. I'm going to keep pursuing what God put in my heart. Normal people would give up, but you're not normal. You want it on another level. How bad do you want what God has put in your heart. 
bad enough to do the right thing when the wrong thing is happening? Do you want it bad enough to keep pursuing even when circumstances say it's not going to happen? If you're overcome by problems, you let circumstances push you down, people talk you out of it, you're not going to have the strength to sustain where God is taking you. You have to be more determined than the opposition. If you give up every time things don't go your way, you didn't want it bad enough. Are you letting people talk you out of what God put in your heart? You can't get well. You saw the report. You can't start that business. Let that go in one ear and out the other. Ignore what they're saying. If you're going to see what you're believing for, you have to be willing to do what other people won't do. Other people may not believe when it looks impossible. They may get discouraged, tell you, don't bother praying. No use getting your hopes up. You're wasting your time. Say, God, this looks impossible, but I know you can do the impossible. The odds are against me, but God, I know you are for me. Well, I dated two girls. Both of them told me I wasn't their type. I don't think I'll ever get married. You don't want it bad enough. There are several million other girls out there. How bad do you want to get out of debt? Bad enough to not buy things you can't afford? Bad enough to honor God by tithing your income? How bad do you want that promotion? Bad enough to get to work early? Bad enough to take that online course to sharpen your skills? How bad do you want your children to stay on the right course? We don't think twice about having to get our children up for school. Their schooling is incredibly important. But I could argue that their spiritual life is even more important. <laughs> Learning to honor God as a person of excellence and integrity, those seeds planted in them will affect them for the rest of their lives. How bad do you want your marriage, your relationships to work out? Bad enough to clean up a mess that you didn't make? There are new levels in front of us, but much of it depends on how bad we want it. You can pray, God, help me to feel better. God, I'm always so tired. Are you eating right? Are you exercising? Are you living stressed and worried? Then God will do what you're asking. But you can't override natural laws and expect to live a blessed, healthy life. When he sees you doing all you can, then he'll make things happen that you can't. Now do your part and distinguish yourself. Be willing to do what others won't do. Yes, it takes discipline, but the pain of discipline is less than the pain of regret. It's hard to lay off the junk food, things that are not good for you. That pain is less than the pain of not being healthy. One of the saddest things is to come to the end of life and wonder what I could have become. What if I would have broken away from those friends that were causing me to compromise? Where would I be? What if I would have taken that step of faith in my career and not played it safe all the time? You don't have to wonder. You can start right now. The question is, do you want it bad enough? Make this decision. I am not going to live complacent, passive. I'm going to pursue what God put in my heart. The difference between a dream and a wish is a wish is something you just hope it happens, but a dream you put actions behind. Faith without works is dead. Wishing isn't going to get you anywhere. The people that succeed, don't always have the most talent, the most opportunity. Many times they simply want it more than others. I've, I've always been a believer in the struggles men have in their minds, and I've always spoke about it, and I've suffered with them myself. And this is one of the things when I say like depression isn't real, people say, oh, you don't understand. Let me, let me counter that argument by saying, I understand very well. Me convincing myself and me deciding that depression isn't real is how I prevent myself from ever feeling depressed. And I can o I've only constructed that mental model because I've been in situations in my life where I felt depressed. I'm not saying depression isn't real because I've never felt depressed. I'm saying depression isn't real because I've been very depressed. The people don't understand where my mindset comes from. I understand struggle and mental health and all these things. And 
yeah, jail was another chance to certainly touch on them because in jail you can, in, sorry, in real life, when you have my kind of resource, you can distract yourself very easily. If you're sitting around and feel a bit mopey, if I'm sitting here and I'm a bit like, oh, I can literally make a phone call and in 45 minutes be in the air on my way to anywhere on the planet with whoever I want to do anything I want. So you can distract yourself. I'm not saying it fixes all mental health, but it distracts you. Whereas in jail, you are stuck alone with your thoughts. And it was certainly a test of my mental resolve. And I would say that I passed. I, I did well. I, 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 there was never a day where I broke down. There was never a day where I couldn't handle it. There was never a day where I was, you know, I wasn't polite to the staff. I was very nice to everybody. There was never a day I couldn't hack it. It was certainly a test. And also, you know, Tristan said this. I don't want to take his words, but he's true. You go through life telling everyone you're the baddest motherfucker there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to test you. You walk in the pub and you say, I'm the hardest man there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to fight you. Sooner or later. And life's like that. You want to be the top G and you want to go through life and say, I'm the top G. Then God's going to say, well, we're going to see if you deserve to call yourself the top G or not. We're going to put you in a remaining jail cell. And we're going to leave you there to rot. You're not going to know how long you're in there for. And the biggest mind fuck is I thought I was going to be in there for years. I didn't. I had no idea. Everyone's telling me years, years, years. I thought I was going to be in there for years. So maybe God was just seeing. He was watching me and he was having a look and saying, you want to call yourself top G? Let's see. And I like to think I passed that test. So it is what it is. But yeah, I agree with you. In, in terms of mental struggles, yeah, they exist for all men. And I also think that's one of the reasons I'm so large. I talk about those things a lot. I talk about those things a lot with men and I help men with them. And I try and say to men overall that life as a man is pretty shit. And you're going to feel shit for a pretty large percentage of the time. But you're only going to ever escape that if you just perform regardless. You have to perform when you feel bad. As a man, you can't say, I will perform when I feel good. It doesn't work that way because our heads are too complicated and life's too complicated. And there's too much on our shoulders. And we have too much stress and too much pressure. Our heads are fucked. You have to be the kind of person who says, I perform regardless. I didn't miss a single day's training. I didn't miss a please. I didn't miss a thank you. I'm not saying I was happy. I'm saying I did exactly what I was supposed to do. The worst thing about prison, I think for everybody else, because there's a lot of men in there who were crying, a lot of men who were having mental breakdowns. I think it is the problem I didn't have, which is knowing that if you're a normal man, you go to jail and they just pick you up and you go to jail. Who pays the rent? Who's feeding your kids? Who's your wife sleeping with? Like, like life gets hard for all the external things you could no longer control, things that were your responsibility. I was lucky I didn't have those problems. And when I spoke to people, most people's issues were things that were happening on the outside. And I felt really good knowing that my life is set up in a way where even if I'm plucked from it, it operates. And I set that up because I thought they were gonna kill me. Even to this day, if they shoot me right now, everyone around, everything would be okay. I don't have to exist for my life to function. So that was fantastic about jail. The worst thing about jail, I mean, the cockroaches started off really bad, but after a few days, it's amazing how quickly you used to cockroaches just in your bed. <laughs> You're just like, kick them out the way that was kind of bad but um not knowing when i'm gonna get out that was bad having my name slandered all around the world that was bad not knowing how people are reacting to it like the, my first time month in jail i didn't know if people believed this garbage or not I, I had no access to the internet i didn't see anything there was a lot about it that was hard but um i have to believe it's gonna make me a better person why else would i why else did i go what did I go for? To waste three months? To stare at a wall for three months? Is that why I went to jail? No, I must have gone to jail to become a better person. I must have learned something. I have to self-analyze and find the lessons and pick it out. And I think a lot of people don't do that with all the bad situations in their life. And regardless of whether you went to jail or a woman left you or your business failed, whatever it is, you need to analyze the entire situation and say, okay, what can I learn? There's a, there's a big pile of shit here, but there must be a little bit of gold inside. So I've just tried to look at it as a massive learning experience and perhaps as a coping mechanism, but I've found a lot of lessons which I'm implementing and, uh, and there's a very strong chance they're going to put me back. Not because I'm guilty, because I haven't done anything wrong, but because I'm currently in the middle of a, a, a judicial system. I'm in, in, I'm in the judicial system of a country. I don't truly understand the language. I don't understand the judicial system. I don't understand the charges against me. I don't understand how any of this can be legal. I don't understand how where it's come from. I don't understand the evidence they believe they have. And here I am stuck in this process. And who knows how it's going to end. There are moments in your life that you feel overwhelmed by life, by people, by your own circumstances, by struggles. We all get knocked down in every aspect of life. 
Life has a way of humbling you. Life will make you shut up. Life will mute you. You're going to feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. At times you won't want to come out the house. At times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why. What's wrong? I don't know. Just leave me alone. You will cry. You're going to fail and you're going to be in your head. You're going to be saying, I'm not good enough. But it's okay. It goes with the territory. It's a part of the deal. The real challenge of growth comes when you get knocked down. You got to get messed up sometimes. You got to get dirty. You got to get your feelings hurt. You got to get disappointed. You going to ask somebody for some money. He going to tell you no. That's just dirt. How you handle it. That's where the growth takes place. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this. If somebody came and knocked you down, there ain't nothing you can do about it. But if I come back a week later and you're still on the ground, we got a problem. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. The way you were born, what happened to you is not your fault. But doggone it, you still on the ground after 20 years? See, you get tripped out because you got dirt on you. But you need dirt on you to develop. If you get knocked down, there's nothing you can do about it. But getting back up has every single thing to do with you. Don't you give up on your dream. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. See, you get mad when haters come your way. You get mad because you get a setback. You get mad because they talking about you. That's dirt. You are not the only person that's been through a divorce, boo. Get over it. You're not the first one they let go of. You won't be the last one. The question is, what you going to do about it? I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. I just need you to identify what your pain is. And then I need you to ask yourself what you're going to do about it. And maybe you've been knocked down in your life and it seems like, hey, the fight is over. It is not over unless you quit. You can permit it to let it hold you down or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. You have a choice to either give up or get up. You got to get gritty, man. You got to develop some dog in you. You can decide, I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. You have to learn to turn and look at every obstacle as an opportunity. I will not give up. Every time I get knocked down, I will get back up and I will succeed. I love myself enough not to be trapped in the same doggone spot for the rest of my life. No pain, no gain. Pain has a purpose. Your pain ain't permanent. It might last for a second. It might last for a minute. It might last for months. But sooner or later, if you do not surrender, if you do not give up, it will subside. Don't go through it. Grow through it. And as pain leaves your body, guess what's going to take its place? Success. You cannot build anything that won't bring a battle. And if you're going through a battle right now, it's only because you're building something. Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. What will you do with your pain? Will you let it break you or will you let it redefine? Your pain is going to be a part of your prize. I challenge you to push yourself. You want affirmation, look yourself in the mirror and say, I think I can, I know I can. You've got to decide to be relentless. You've got to decide never to give up. Do whatever it takes. You're your biggest driver. You've got to find some reasons within yourself that will give you the stamina when life catches you on the blind side to keep on calling and coming back again and again and again. You see, the fight's not over if you've been knocked down. It's only over if you quit. Because life is a fight. It's a fight for integrity, your goals, your dreams, your ambitions. So every morning, I've got to wake up and I've got to fight. You're going to quit or you're going to make it to your silver. You're going to quit or you're going to make it to your goal. So you can stop waiting for it. You can stop wishing for it. And you can get on with the rest of your life. I got to fight for my dreams. I got to fight for character. I got to fight for integrity. When you get to the point where enough is enough, doors start opening, opportunities start happening. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit during the process. All I'm saying is don't quit. I didn't say don't rest. Mentally, you can stay connected. But to win fights, you got to have stamina. You got to be ready to fight and bounce back. You better not feel sorry for yourself. You better get up and fight.
And some of you are not successful because every single time you run up against a trial, you stop. I need you to match whatever effort the enemy is putting up. Match the doggone efforts. I'm going to think, I'm going to execute, and I'm going to win. And that's how you get to the next level. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. It's when you have nothing left. It's when you depleted all your money. When you have nothing left, that's when it's showtime. At the end of the day is your promise. So stop crying about it and use your energy to get through it. When you find a way out of no way, when you find breath that you don't have, when you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. I cannot stop what happens to me, but I can dictate how I respond. I invested too much to quit. So when life happens, I don't just sit there and cry. I brought back. Because all of us, if you live long enough, will go through a period of feeling so overwhelmed. Sooner or later you feel, oh God, just get me out of this. I wish I could tell you it's going to get easier. I wish I could tell you that, but that's not the truth. The truth is, you got to find something within. Life's going to whip your butt. Life is going to bully you. Stop crying. Let it hit you. But don't let it punk you. And when you find out what your why is, when you find your why, you find a way to make it happen. And I'm telling you right now, don't give up. Don't give in. Get through it. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, you're still in the game. You're going to be here one day, but you'll never get here if you give up. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, you still can win. And finally, guys, you got to want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. And you will promise me that from this day forward, you will not be defeated. Somebody holler, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Don't count me out. I may be sick, I may be crazy, I may be confused, but I'm not dead yet. Some people live in the cemetery of their failures. And I want to say to somebody who's fallen, or everybody hates you, and everybody walked away from you, don't live where they left you. Nudge somebody and tell them I will not die here. Whatever it takes for me to get out, I got to get out of here. I will not die on drugs. I will not die in depression. I will not die where you met me. Number one motivating thing for me, and I'm just being honest, was I was sick and tired of being poor. My mother was poor, my father was poor, my brothers and sisters were poor. I lived in a poor neighborhood, we lived in a poor house. And I would say, you know, like at Christmas time, my father would put us in the car and take us out to the suburbs to see the Christmas lights. And I would see these big houses, man. I told my father, I said, Dad, I said, why don't we get one of these houses? He said, boy, I ain't got no money for this kind of house. He said, but if you work hard, you can make some money, you can buy you one of these houses. My motivation was to buy a big house so I could put up Christmas lights. And I always dreamed of buying my mother and father a real house. And before they died, I was able to do all of that. You have to find a dream that's so big that it overwhelms all of your fears and causes you to never give up. Always go to something bigger than yourself. I'm wondering if you've been defeated because you have been giving yourself wholly to something that was too small to hold you. Are you trying to take a bath in a bowl? Are you not guilty of immersing yourself into things that were too small to hold your vision. Why do you keep imagining buying a house? Why do you keep imagining getting rich one day? Why do you keep imagining that? Because God is talking to you. You got to start believing in your imagination.